Okay, good morning again, everybody. I, I should have tried to, to fool you into thinking I was Reverend Lacey. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is the day the Lord has made, and I am glad and I rejoice in it. You don't sound so fool, bro. <laughs> Okay, so this is, this is week three in our Back to Basics. Back to Basics. Now, and I'm so glad that we do this. And the reason I'm glad is that, that we do this is because if we forget that the thing itself is an omnipower, and that's exactly what it is, an omnipower, which means that it's everywhere present, it's everywhere active, and that it's all-knowing. If we forget that, and if we forget the way it works, which is what Reverend, Reverend Mary Jo and, and Dr. J told us last week, that it works, it gives to us by giving through us, right? And, and if we forget what it does, which is what I'm going to talk about this morning, and if we, forget, if we forget how to use it, which is what I'm going to talk about next week, then... What happens is we will tend to go off half-cocked thinking that this is a positive thinking philosophy. And that is not what it is. So many times people tell me about things that are going, in their, going on in their life and they're saying, but I'm positive about it, Dar. I'm going, okay, sit down. <laughs> sit down. Sit down, because we got some work to do. See, remember, you always hear me say, this is, this is not a, a philosophy about weathering the storm, right? This is a philosophy that teaches us how to change the forecast if we don't want to see the storm. Is that right? Okay, so this is not a positive thinking. Okay, I'm, just, I'm going through this, and I'm just going to be positive about it. No, no. If we don't like where we are, we can change it by changing our mind, okay? So I think it's really, it's really critical that we understand this. See, we wanna understand what this power does because in or by understanding what this power does, we also begin to understand what this power does not do, which is the way that Ernest Holmes starts this unit. He says, we should approach the study of this science rationally, never expecting to derive any benefits from it that its principle does not contain, right? So he's saying you have to understand what it does in order to understand what it doesn't do, okay? And this is where many of us as students of the science of mind really need to have our metaphysical tune-up. This is a time for all of us because we have, to, we have to tune up our awareness of what this really says because many times what it is that we're thinking we read, that we're thinking we heard, and that we're acting on isn't what it says at all. Okay. So Dr. Holmes goes on to say, still in that very first paragraph, this, is just, this chapter is just chock full of stuff. I had to say, well, I had to select the stuff that I'm going to use because it's so full. But he says, for while it is true that we are immersed in an infinite intelligence, a mind that knows all things, it is also true that this intelligence can acquaint us with its ideas, only as we are able and willing to receive them. Pay attention to that word receive, okay? The divine mind, he says, is infinite. It contains all knowledge and wisdom, but before it can reveal its secrets, its secrets, it must have an outlet. This outlet we shall be compelled to supply through our own receptive mentalities. Hmm. Now I want to go back to a very important word that he used there in that paragraph, and that's secrets. 
He said, before this mind can reveal its secrets. Now, the reason that I'm pointing that word out to all of us this morning is because he's telling us that while we live in infinite intelligence and while we live in an all-knowing mind, there are still things that are available to us. There are still things that are possible for us that remain a secret to us. Just because we live in this all-knowing mind, there has to be something within us that, and we talked about this in class last Monday night, there has to be something in us, within us, that looses this experience, this, this information into our experience that looses it into our world. It's like finding the the magic button and pushing it and boom, that door opens and all that unlimited good just comes forth. But there's something in us that looses these secrets into our experience. Now I remember a time in my life when I could sit through an entire prosperity class or seminar, maybe all day seminar, listening to them saying that prosperity was my birthright. Listening to them saying that prosperity was my inheritance. Listening to them saying that there's no limit to it. Listening to them saying that that it's in abundant supply right now and listening to them saying that it was already mine. And I also remember that I was listening, but not hearing. Because I could walk out of that door of that class or that seminar and say, wow, you know, that prosperity stuff sure sounds good to me. I sure love listening to it. It makes me feel so good when I think about it. I wonder what I need to do to get prosperous. (laughs) After an all day seminar. See? Because I wasn't receiving. I wasn't receiving it. See, see, the the thing that we want to recognize is that if we start from the belief that we're not, 